Wigwams are Native American indigenous houses used by Algonquin peoples in the woodland regions. Wigwam is the word for house in the Abenaki language. Wigwams are usually six to eight feet tall and 10 to 14 feet in diameter and are houses that are dome shaped in structure, similar to an upside down bowl. The doorway of the wigwam should always face east to greet the rising sun. A wigwam may have platforms for sleeping and a pit or a centered depression for heated rocks. Strawberry Bank Museum is a 10-acre campus dedicated to bringing history to life, from indigenous history to the present day in the Puddle Dock neighborhood. Museum visitors may tour historic houses on their original foundations, meet engaging role players, watch traditional craft demonstrations, and explore historical gardens and landscapes. In 2019, Strawberry Bank Museum opened the People of the Dawnland exhibit, an interactive space for museum visitors to learn about the Abenaki, the indigenous inhabitants of the area past and present. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the museum's historic houses, including the exhibit space, were temporarily closed to the public, and the museum staff began seriously considering the creation of an outdoor space to expand the interpretation of Indigenous heritage. Oral histories tell us that Abenaki people came to this area, now known as Puddle Dock, to set up seasonal communities for hunting and fishing. Archaeological evidence, including stone tools and ceramic fragments, confirm the presence of indigenous people over more than 10,000 years. Most significantly, the 2015 discovery of a soil stain that archaeologists call a post mold suggested that there may have been a wigwam in this general location. The internal frame of a wigwam is made from young red maple or swamp maple saplings. However, red willow can be used. They need to be trimmed of branches and without defects. They also have to be supple enough to bend and form the curved shape, but strong enough so that the sapling can withstand the construction process. Once the frame is constructed, it is tied together in order to ensure a secure structure. A wigwam would typically be covered with birch bark, red oak bark, or elm bark. However, the structure at Strawberry Bank has been left uncovered for now, so visitors can look at the internal structure. The materials for this wigwam were gathered from the Thompson Farm at the University of New Hampshire, and we thank them for the support of this project. Typically, the materials would be gathered by a community from the land where the wigwam was to be built. First, a level site is selected for the wigwam, ensuring the ground is not too soft, that it will not hold the saplings, and also that it does not have bedrock too close to the ground surface. Then a circle is laid out from a center point with a string or fixed length stick, marking the circle outline on the ground with another stick. Often, this could be done by using your feet, measuring the width by spreading your feet apart and dragging one foot to mark the circle on the ground. Then, depending on the overall size, 12 to 16 points are marked along the circle and holes are made for the poles. In the rocky soil at Strawberry Bank, we had to use a heavy hammer and metal pry bar to make the holes deep enough in the ground. When the holes are formed, tobacco is placed into each of them. This is done as a traditional thank you and blessing to Mother Earth, and the tobacco also acts as a repellent to ground insects that bore holes into the poles. After selecting the saplings, which should be straight, no thicker than two inches in diameter, and with no branches, they can be placed standing in the ground. Saplings that face each other across the circle are bent over and tied together. Ultimately, when joined together, it looks like six to eight saplings form the inner upright frame, weaving or crossing over and under each other to form a strong structure. 
Then it is time to add the four horizontal side bands. These are lashed around the dome-shaped upright frame in equally placed bands around the circumference of the wigwam. The two lower bands create the entrance by leaving the space open between the two eastern facing upright poles. With the wigwam frame complete, next it would be traditionally covered in bark in order to create a dry and warm home, which would last anywhere from two to five years. Strawberry Bank values authenticity in its interpretation. Indigenous knowledge and expertise is so valuable to understanding Native life ways, but have been left out of historical narratives for too long. So, it was important for Strawberry Bank staff to collaborate with Indigenous leaders on this project, continuing the relationships developed during seasonal events and programming and in the creation of the People of the Dawnland exhibit. Indigenous New Hampshire Collaborative Collective is a grassroots movement of community members from diverse cultural backgrounds working to reframe New Hampshire's heritage through a decolonial lens. We do not speak on behalf of Indigenous peoples. We stand in solidarity with Indigenous peoples. Collaborations such as the Wigwam Building at Strawberry Bank are the foundation of our educational work. You can learn more about INHCC at our website, indigenousnh.com, or by following up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter.